Hi everybody, Jonathan here from Logarithm and today I'd like to introduce you to MissNet NDR, Logarithm's latest network detection and response engine. Now to give you some context into what MissNet is and the power behind it, MissNet is Logarithm's next generation uh, network detection response tool and it leverages a new computing paradigm known as MIST computing. Now this allows MISNET to uniquely deliver a global view of all your data and a global view of all your analytics, but without data movement. This is a patented capability by MISNET known as TensorMIST AI, and which this uses distributed computing to scale data collection and analytics. Now TensorMIST AI effectively co-locates your analytic processing alongside our collection engines constructing a distributed mesh for big data processing. Now again, this provides the ability to collect and enrich security data on location and generally ex providing exceptionally accurate behavior models without having to move any of that data. So this is an absolutely unique, powerful capability for us, for my customers out there, will reduce the expenses of having to ship data from the cloud to on-prem or from data center to data center so this is something really, really powerful by MISNET. The next thing that MISNET provides is unlike your traditional legacy NDR products out there today, which rely on just machine learning or machine analytics, MISNET combines the power of machine learning with signature-based detection rules, threat detection, as well as user and host contextualization. So this gives you that complete holistic view about what is happening across your network and allows you to reduce false positives by over 90%, but block the real severe advanced attacks in real time. So what I'd like to do today is give you this whistle stop tour of MISNET and then show you how the integration with MISNET can work with other themes that you may have in your organization. And of course, I will show you how this interacts with Logarithm today. So what we're looking at here is effectively the, uh, the MISNET dashboard. Now, this is a dashboard as you would typically come to expect. It has a real-time activity trend about the types of data coming into your network. It has a data transfer and receive speeds. It has your anomaly trend chart showing you how your anomaly and threat severity has changed over time. And it also has the notable users and notable hosts that have been detected in your environment. And again, this is part of the layering of that human and host contextualization, which we'll talk about more in a moment. Finally, on the left-hand side, we have a high-level radar graph, which provides you an overall, overall view of the sorts of activity we're seeing in your network. So first, we have the number of hosts ingested and detected on the network, likewise with the users that we've detected and ingested into the platform. Next, we have the incidents. Now, what you can see, hopefully, is a very low number of incidents, only 12. Uh, and this has been running for several weeks now. And this is the reason why MISNET is so powerful. It is a very low noise, high fidelity system, which allows you to effectively reduce the number of false positives you're going to get. But how does it do that? Well, let me explain. So MISNET leverages this notion of attack indicators or indicators of attack, which again leverages this machine learning, human contextualization, host contextualization and signatures to make a determination as to where the activity it is seeing is bad, or anomalous, should we say. If it detects anomalous activity or something which represents an indicator of an attack, it doesn't immediately trigger an event or an incident in this case. What MISNET will do, it will hold that incident in memory or hold that event in memory and keep feeding it through the machine learning algorithms alongside any other associated data that it may see. And only once all the evidence has been corroborated and has reached a sufficient threshold, is only then does that become an incident. So what you will get in the MISNET platform is good visibility, i.e. the indicators of an attack of all the suspicious activity occurring in your environment. Uh, you should get a good number of cases being created because again, when an indicator of an attack um, is sufficiently scored, it becomes a case. And then as that case progresses, it eventually turns into an incident automatically or again manually should you wish. So today what I want to walk you through is a very quick tour of the incidents and how we hunt the system. So let's kick off. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to drill down into the incidents page 
and I'm going to show you some really cool, unique things that MistNet provides. So what we have here is the, uh, uh, an example of different activity we're seeing. We're seeing Heartbleed, Domain Generation Algorithms, Brute Forces, etc. Uh, but what I want to show you, which combines all the different engines and uh, um, uh, capabilities, is a piece of malware which we detected in, a, in, in our demo environment. So when I drill into this particular incident, we're going to get some really, really powerful data, but presented to us very, very simply. The first is, of course, we're going to get is the score. Again, in this case, it's only a score of three, so it's not high severity. Next, we're going to look at, we're going to be provided with a description of the event. And this is, again, is a very clear human English translation of the event we're seeing. And this is designed to help the analysts. So you don't have to be an expert in the field of networks. You just have to be able to understand what you're looking at. See, here we're seeing malware activity. What type of malware activity? In this case, it's a backdoor PC rat family. Uh, it's been detected on Alex's machine on this IP address uh, going to this IP address. It's an internal to internal communication. We've received 113 indicators representing this one incident. Five of those were unique and 108 of those were considered anomalous. We then have an indicator about what we're looking at. And again, uh, a quick recommendation of what we think you need to do in order to remediate, mitigate this particular threat. As we start to scroll down, you could, we'll now be able to see all the users, the hosts, and, and the destinations involved. In this case, I'm clicking on the user, which in this case is Alex, to get some context about who Alex is and what is he doing in the network and how has his profile changed during this attack window. Now, what we can see on the right-hand side is, again, uh, Alex's score over time. You can see it, it, it averages, it changes, and so forth, which is totally normal. But during this attack window, which is highlighted in these blue boxes, you can see Alex's score wildly changed and his score wildly fluctuated during these events timeframes. If we start to scroll down, and let me increase my time frame here, as we start to scroll down, we can start to see all activity that Alex has been performing uh, within the platform. So we can start to drill down on Alex, understand Alex's activity, start filtering down the types of events, and so on and so forth, as you would expect from your traditional uh, UBA systems, as well as um, from your various different user contextualization systems. As we scroll further down, we can now see a timeline of every single case or incident that Alex has been associated with. And of course, the more cases or incidents that Alex is associated with and the severity of those incidents will push Alex's score up, which will give you that overall score that Alex is seeing today. As we scroll further down, we can now see all the various different engines and all the individual unique indicators of attack that made up this one single incident. In this case, we're seeing two engines at play here. One is our machine learning engine running at a distributed scale. And the other is our rules engine, which is leveraging the latest in scenario-based detection techniques, i.e. things like signatures and patterns of activity. It's combined all of those two together and it's done, it's combined all the activity together automatically. But the other advantage is, is that it's held a lot of this data in memory while it's associated all the various events together. So for example, we can see that the first activity occurred on January the 22nd. And we can see almost the last activity occurred on uh, February the 4th. So what MISNET has been doing is been taking all the activity by Alex, by this host and all the network activity, and again, constantly running through the machine learning algorithms to determine whether these events are associated or not. And it, in this case, it's determined that it is associated and it's determined that it's the backdoor PC rate or, or ghost traffic that has been attributed as the main event. So all of these other activities are symptoms of or associated with activity commonly seen with this ghost traffic. As we come further down, you can now see a timeline of all the activity performed by Alex. Now again, MISNET tries to make your life easy, so it only filters to the top the main events or the main indicators of an attack which made up this single incident. From here again, you can look at all the various data. You can look at the payload traffic. You can look at the uh, um, what's that translated to and extract that from uh, the payload itself. We can look inside uh, um, the metadata to see all the individual events that made up, uh, oh, sorry, all the individual activities that made up this one event. 
Um, but we can also go one step further and not just look at the highlighted events, because remember, for those of you who are watching carefully, there were 108 activities that made up this one incident, and below I'm only seeing four. If I wanted to, I can expand this out to show me now all the unique indicators of attack that made up again this one incident. And again, I can start to investigate, hunt, pivot, and so forth. Now, if we wanted to do what is called a side-by-side -side hunt, so if I want to take the information discovered in the incident and now start to hunt my wider network about the activity that I'm seeing, we can do just that. So I'm going to increase my activity, say, the last 30 days. And what I'm going to do is leverage some saved queries to effectively um, see if there's any associated users or hosts or anomalies with the activity I'm seeing in this incident. So let's take a look, Am I, who else, I can take a look at who else is talking to this particular entity. And I can expand that out and it's defaulted to the last 24 hours. So I can see here if there's any other entity in my network communicating with this host. Likewise, I can see all activities by this user as you saw before uh, from Alex. Again, let's expand that out. Uh, but again, I can start to hunt my network, search my network, pivot my on my network and filter it down until I find any other additional associated events or find out additional information which Alex has been doing, which may be, uh, again, associated or symptomatic of a wider outbreak. So this is a very, very quick uh, tour again of the incidents page. Now let's jump into hunting and some really, really fantastic capabilities that Mr. provides when hunting the network. So here I'm bringing up the data uh, uh, that's been collected by MISNET. Again, this is geographically spread. So in this particular scenario environment, uh, it's actually made up of five unique sites. I've got three different distributed uh, uh, AWS environments. I also have three distinct and completely non-connected uh, data centers. But from a MISNET perspective, all that data is coming to a central location. All that data is being analyzed, correlated, etc but none of that data, again, is leaving those sites. And that's really, really important. You've got to wrap your head around that. So as we come to the hunting page, I can now again, as before, see all the different types of activity that have occurred in my network. I can leverage MISNET's filtering engine, which allows me to, again, filter based on various different attributes combined or found within the metadata. So here I'm looking at the various different categories of the events that I'm seeing. I could take it a step further, look at the various different triggers uh, which generated these events. So again, if I expand that out in a moment, you'll see I'm looking credential access, uh, Microsoft device metadata retrieval, etc., etc. And again, I can drill down into any one of those events. And this is your atypical hunting that you would expect to see. I can also not uh, natively just hunt the platform using uh, uh, the filtering. I can leverage full unstructured structured searching powered by Lucene. I could even again leverage the saved queries. So if I want to see, hey, you know, show me all the different types of alerts and trigger events which have occurred in the last 30 days. And here we go. We can now see all the data appearing on the system which are associated with alerts and events. Again, I can expand that out to see things like, hey, show me all the incident and case trend that I'm seeing in the network today. And again, we can do that, drill down, expand what we're seeing, and so on and so forth. Even look at, again, the payloads that we've been detected, start to look at the metadata being associated with. And again, all the metadata being generated is automatically uh, uh, flowing through the machine learning as well. But what I really want to show you is something really powerful. So let's just clear this out. And I want to draw your attention to the MITRE Enterprise Attack button over here. Now, this is powerful. MISNET has a built-in MITRE ATT&CK framework hunting engine. And this gives you the ability to not only search your entire environment using uh, MITRE ATT&CK techniques, but the machine learning algorithms themselves are tuned to look for these techniques too and uh, raise them up, of course, when it sees them. Now, you can hunt your network based on specifics. So I'm running, for example, an Azure AD environment. And again, now you're seeing um, all the TTPs used according to MITRE to infiltrate, laterally move and exfiltrate data from a, uh, um, a, a Azure AD based environment. I can layer on top the type of infrastructure I'm running if I'm running an on-premise or IaaS infrastructure as a service 
type environment. Let's say I'm running a Windows-based environment, a Linux-based environment, and so on and so forth. And I could be able to map all the various different TTPs in order to infiltrate, exploit, and, and conf, you know, potentially steal data from any one of those types of environments. MISNET has even layered on top various different types of malware and the techniques used by various different types of malware seen in the wild. One which we're all familiar with is something like WannaCry. I can switch that on and again see all the techniques used by WannaCry when infecting a network. We can even go so far as to layer on top techniques used by various different APT groups. Again, so I can look at things like APT39. Who are they? What's their MO? And again, if I want to see them in action, I can simply turn it on and again, now see all the TTPs used by this particular threat actor. If I wanted to as well, I can take the data that I'm seeing. I'm just going to pick one at random. Here's a multi-hop proxy and I can click on that. And again, search my network using MITRE techniques, see the data results displayed in real time. And again, see all the different types of indicators of an attack or metadata captured which is related to that particular MITRE technique. If I'm not overly familiar with that MITRE technique, I can go ahead and simply click this eye icon, which will give me all the information about that technique or that tactic, should I say. And again, if I want to know more, I can simply click on the more info button and that's gonna happily take me to the MITRE attack page related to that particular technique. So that's a little bit on hunting. Uh, lastly, I want to show you around my users and hosts. So again, as I mentioned before, in order for MISNET to give you that high level view uh, and that high fidelity alarms around all the data that it's capturing, you want to be able to layer in multiple detection techniques. So in this case, MISNET does an amazing job of combining the network, the human, even other data types together when analyzing it to determine how bad a user is and what they're doing. So again, if we jump back into Alex for a moment, we can again see Alex's score. Who is Alex? Um, you know, how has his score changed in the last month, the last year, et cetera, et cetera. We can start seeing all activity performed by Alex. We can start to see all cases associated with Alex. So again, we're taking this data and combining it with the network, the, the host data, and various other data types to give you those high fidelity alarms. Now, for my customers out there who are already logarithm users and they want to understand how does this tie into logarithm, well, of course, you can imagine we already have dashboards, ingestion capabilities, and even orchestration capabilities with the MISNET platform. So here I'm logged into the logarithm UI and I'm seeing a very quick overview of um, what are my uh, user trends that I'm seeing, the user scores and how they're changing, the incidents that I'm seeing, the anomalies that I'm seeing and so forth, and even the indicators of an attack, which I'm uh, feeding up into the system. I can take all the data I'm seeing and of course analyze the incidents or the anomalies on a graph. And if I wanted to, I can look at all the, uh, the various different cases that I'm seeing. So let's take um, one of our high severity events. Let's take uh, uh, scores of 60, let's say at the moment. So let's wait for this data to load as it's coming in. And we're seeing anomalous activity from an un or unusual RDP activity by one of the service accounts, which is unusual actually. Again, we can drill down, see the data behind it. And if needs be, I can take the particular case that was sent to me via MISNET. And if I want to get more details on the user, the host, etc., which made up that particular uh, incident, I can simply use the contextualizations jump straight back into MISNET to that same UI, and now I can get all the context around the user, the host, the incident, and so on and so forth. And again, all the activity that made up this particular um, uh, incident itself. Mist, uh, well, sorry, Logarithm, of course, also has automated actions built right in. So again, we can take advantage of things like smart responses. So when an incident is created in uh, uh, MISNET, it will automatically create a, a, a case within Logarithm. Logarithm will automatically go and consume all the various bits of data and present that to the user. So again, I hope you uh, enjoyed this very quick uh, tour of MISNET. It's a, it's a fantastic platform. It provides huge amounts of value with very, very little no, uh, low noise. So uh, that's MISNET. If you want to know more, please reach out to anyone from Logarithm and we'll happily go into details about the platform. That's it from me. Thank you very much.